The Lord be with you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we welcome all of you to our worship service this morning. We're pleased to have guests and visitors in our midst. We invite you to stay for the coffee hour that follows our worship service this morning. And in that regard, I'd also call your attention to the announcement on the yellow sheet about coffee hour. We have opportunity to sign up. So um, please do so if you are able to help with coffee hour on a given Sunday. The sign-up sheet is on the bulletin board right outside the narthex. We want to thank the Summer Choir for special music this morning, and uh, we also want to thank Abby Holmgren and Roxy Steinberg for your special music this morning. Come anytime. Thank you. Our Board of Youth Ministry summer trip begins next Sunday right after church. We are headed to Colorado, just south of Colorado Springs, for some outdoor adventures and Bible study on the Old Testament book of the prophet Jonah. Please keep us in your prayers as we travel. For those going on the trip, our last meeting, mandatory meeting, is tonight at 6 o'clock here at the church. We look forward to seeing all of the trippers at 6 tonight. In your bulletin this morning, you found a red insert again uh, with what John Glenn students need for the coming year. If you are able to help with some shopping for those students, please do so. Our worship begins with confession and forgiveness. That portion of the service is at the red tab, page 94. Will the congregation please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Curie is on page 147 at the yellow tab. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. printed on the front page of this morning's bulletin. Let us join in prayer. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for this Sunday is from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, Chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. This may be found in the Old Testament portion of your Bible on page 725. A reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, 
and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. The second lesson for this Sunday is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. This may be found in the New Testament of your pew Bible on page 192. A reading from Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. 
He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Here ends the reading. gospel is written in the sixth chapter of the gospel of Mark, beginning with the 30th verse. Glory to you, o Lord. If you turn to page 41 in the New Testament portion of the scripture, we'll read the gospel together. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and then verses 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, People at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Is everything written in the Bible important? If you're one of those who reads a chapter or two in the Bible for your daily devotions, do you skip over those long lists of names in Genesis or Numbers or at the beginning of Matthew or the Gospel of Luke? And what about the laws relating to what meat can or can't be eaten and all the different kinds of sacrifices encouraged in the Old Testament book of Leviticus? Martin Luther said some books are more important than others and some parts of the Bible we would be better off without. Do you agree? And especially on this day in the middle of the summer, when we come to a gospel lesson like the one we've just read, a handful of verses 
that seem little more than a bit of background and a scene change between the much more important events that came before and after it, are these verses all that important? Maybe you remember in the Gospel for two weeks ago, Jesus sent the disciples out two by two to preach and teach and to heal the sick and demon-possessed. That's important stuff. So is the beheading of John the Baptist, which was last Sunday's Gospel. Those verses help us understand what disciples do and what it might cost those who seek to follow Christ. And after today's Gospel text, there's the feeding of the 5,000. Between all of that are five little verses that tell us when the disciples returned from their mission and made their report, Jesus said to them, Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. Is that or is that not important that Jesus tells the twelve they are in need of and should take some time off to rest? For those of us whose work days or home life are defined and measured by what we have and have not and have yet to accomplish, could it be that there is here for us a word of God to hear and to ponder? For those of us who have grown comfortable with the impression that Peter, James, and John and the others who followed Jesus were supermen and women or that he made them supermen and women who were always doing ministry, neglecting their health or the health of their families, like those who run full bore until their fatigue forces them to bed. Is there something here for us? What about those of us who are burned out or stressed out or who think we're getting pretty close, who know we really could use some time off and maybe not only some time away from work, but maybe some time away from serving on committee or volunteering for this, that, or the other? Is this word of our Lord to his first 12 disciples? when they had just returned from an assignment that he himself had given them, is there encouragement here for us, a word of life for us, that without feeling guilty, we might decline the next call for help that issues from the pulpit, or in the cross currents, or the principal's office at school, or wherever those calls come from these days. Now if you talk to some managers about the people they manage in their departments, or with some of the people who do a lot of telephoning, trying to recruit people for this or that here and elsewhere, they'll tell you that there doesn't seem to be a reluctance on some people's parts to say, no thanks, I'm not interested, when they're asked if they'd be willing to serve. And that is, or it can be, a real problem. And it is not always justifiable, certainly for those who could do more, but choose not to do their share. But even that does not necessarily change the issue with which we are confronted by this word of Jesus to the twelve. You can't work all the time. Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. In that word... Jesus confirms God's intent from the first week of creation. Both work and rest are a part of God's will for the world and the people that God has made. Just as work is intended from the beginning to be a part of what gives shape to human life, so is rest. On the seventh day, God himself rested when he had finished his work, which he had done, and so he commanded, remember the Sabbath day. Work and rest whether it be our job, our family responsibilities, our chores or home improvement projects, or our involvements with the neighbors or the needy, even when it comes to the so-called work of God's own kingdom, work and rest together give shape to the life God intends for the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. Think about that. Rest, for us, rest in the end, is finally, above all else, an act of faith. What else could it be when we take God at God's word and obey God's command or receive God's gift and accept the shaping that God would give to the rest of our lives? When we rest, 
We acknowledge our own humanity, our own createdness. We confess that we are men and women and children who have our limits and who are incapable of living independently because we are in need of renewal and recreation and rehabilitation for our bodies and our minds and our hearts. Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. To accept that gift when it is time To hear and to heed that word is finally also to recognize that whatever work we are given to do, whatever assignments we accept or are ordered to take, whoever we are given to reach out to and to love and care for, as important a part of the work of God's kingdom as all that and we might be, you and I are not indispensable. As responsible as we might be or try to be, it's the Lord who calls us not only to work, but also when we need it, to rest. It's he who ultimately watches over his children, including us, like a shepherd for his flock. He has birthed and pastured and defended, and for whom he even gave his life so that our passage into the valley of the shadow of death will not end in that valley. Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while, Jesus said, when the twelve had returned from their mission. For them he sought rest in a lonely place. And that means he sought for them a retreat from work and crowds where they could be refreshed and renewed and reflect and retool. And if he had in mind for them what he sought for himself when he rested, that lonely place would have been for them a place where they could pray and study focusing again on who they were and who they were called to be and that love and that life that God promised them. Is that also a word for us to hear and consider? Those of us who have given ourselves in the time available to us, to committees and to boards and so on and so forth, if we have sacrificed daily devotions, for example, to cram more of something else into our schedule, is it time to seek that lonely place where reflection and prayer renew and restore? Or if it's been one year or ten years, or since confirmation or graduation, that we spend any significant time studying God's Word and growing in and sharing it with others, is this fall the time for some of us to plan to stay for adult education classes about citizenship on Sunday mornings? Or might we come Tuesday morning or Tuesday evening for a Bible study in the fall on Jesus' resurrection appearances in the Gospels and the book of Acts? Work and rest. Mission and retreat. It's not so much a balance, but a rhythm that God in his love and compassion wills for you and for me. They all go together because if there is one thing also made clear in Jesus' word for today, it's that the retreat, the retreat is always for the purpose of returning to the vocations and the relationships, the healing and the helping, the evangelical outreach through which the Lord of life revealed and established his eternal kingdom. Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. Well, it sounds nice, doesn't it? But pastor, did you read the whole text? They never made it to that lonely place, did they? When they got where they were going, a crowd of 5,000 was already assembling. And what did Jesus do but gear up again? Because when he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And after teaching and feeding them, then in the last verses we read, they continued to seek him because they were anxious for him to heal those whose health was broken. And certainly that does show us that the timing is not always convenient. That sometimes circumstances and people's needs dictate otherwise than what we might have planned or think or know that we ourselves need. But that's not the same as saying, as we might be tempted to think, so much for nice ideas about rest. Because it'll never work in this very real world of ours. That literally is a temptation. 
Remember, it was in a lonely place to which our Lord himself had gone to pray and study that Satan sought to draw Jesus from the relationship and the work that God had established with him because Satan feared what would happen if the Son of God took his Father's word seriously. And the tempter still fears what will happen should you or I take God's word seriously, and that's why some of us are tempted to think there is no time to rest. It all depends on me. If I fail, or if you fail, if you let up or I let go, everything will be lost, everything, including your life and soul and mine. But that is not the way it is. Read again why Jesus kept the crowd together even when he was seeking rest. He taught them. He cared for them. A shepherd in compassion sharing with his sheep the word which is like green pasture and fresh water for the flock. You and I belong to that same shepherd. He loves us and he can be trusted. That's why for us there can be time for work and time for rest. To believe that and to live as we believe to believe that and to live as we believe. For you and me, it remains only to ask, what time is it now? Is it time for us to rest? Or have we been resting long enough? Is now the time to return to the work still left to do? For you and for me, it remains only to ask, what time is it now? and then to follow where the shepherd and his spirit lead us. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
you'll find the Apostles' Creed at the light blue tab. We use those words as we join in confessing our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks that you have given this life to us and that you have equipped and called us to lives of ministry and service for your children, our brothers and sisters who are in need. And we give you thanks that you have called others to lives of ministry and service from which we each benefit because they take seriously that we are among their neighbors, their family members for whom you call them to care. Help us to know when it is time to work, and when it is time to rest. And by your Spirit, help us in those times to know your presence and your peace, and that you are the one who knows us and hears our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If it is true, Lord, that one of the ways that you call us to care for each other is through the work that we share as a nation, then we pray that you will inspire our leaders to heed the wisdom that is the gift of your spirit, and that we who elect them might have the same gift of wisdom guiding us. And we pray that you will help us to be what our name implies, that we are united, and that our unity is in seeking to do for one another as you call us to do. Lord, in your mercy, we know that you, O oh Lord, are the giver of wholeness and health. And we know that life in abundance is your will for your daughters and sons. For that reason, we pray today and ask your help for Mary Jo and Lynn, Richard and Karen, Carter, Michael, Judy, and Brandon, for Marv, Claire Skye, and Ron, for Guy and Kim, David, Dennis, Dorothy, and Jack, for Ellie, Rocky, Kelly, and Sharon, for Rick and Maria, Florence, Carol, Barbara, and Matt, for Dick, Chris, Lori, and Charlotte, Karen, Allison, Andrew, and Jim, for Harry and Rachel, Eric and Kay, Lavon, Diane, Alan, and Lydia, for Diana, Ben, Julie, and Kimmy, for David, Jamie, and Dorothy. Lord, in your mercy, we remember before you today all those who miss and mourn loved ones who now rest in you. Comfort us all with your presence and your peace and the assurance that nothing, not even death, separates your children from you and your love. We pray especially for the families of Ed Zatola and Zhou Zhang Zhang, Ed Deeg and Stephen Yembo, Gloria Clausen and Arlo Stack, Lester Miller and Connie Hecklinger, Dorothy Miller and Calvin Wilson, Norris Sletton, Marlis Carruth, and the Tolly family. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
offering prayers at the top of page three in this morning's bulletin. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. (coughs) 